another show is over. How was it? How do these people feel about it? Do you think they got the pleasure and satisfaction they should have gotten from active participation in an exciting sports event? It was there for them, just as it was for you and for everyone else at the show. But did they get it? Did they have the fun they came for? The show may be over for you and for all the people who worked so hard to put it on, but it isn't over for us at 221. We still have a lot to do, and a great deal of time and effort must still be devoted to the routine handling of hundreds of items through which the records of any one show become part of the permanent records of the sport. It's our job to handle these matters as quickly and efficiently as possible. That's what we're here for. No matter how big a show was, processing the records is routine. Papers like these don't present any problems. But these papers do present problems. They're letters from people for whom the show wasn't fun. Letters from people who came away from the show unhappy and with definitely negative feelings. We get them after many of the more than 600 shows that are held every year. These letters represent problems to you because the things that cause them can affect your enjoyment of the sport and to us because it's our job to see that the sport is protected against them. We're obligated to resolve as many of these problems as we can, and we do. But we'd much rather avoid them, and for that we need your help in understanding what some of these negative feelings are and what causes them. That was the most unfair judging I ever saw in my life. To lose to a dog like that when you've got a record like ours. It really makes you wonder sometimes whether they're judging dogs or people. They ought to know at 221 that that same judge had dinner at their house last night. Why do people like that have to get so excited and spoil it for everybody? If anything like that happens again, we ought to say the heck with it. It just isn't worth it. We've found that in a majority of cases, negative feelings after a show are the result of an attitude. The attitude that an exhibitor or judge takes into a show. An attitude that determines whether the sport will be protected for them or against them. Now let's see what protecting the sport means. And let's start here with the story of Mrs. Susan Anders. The story of an exhibitor a fellow sportsman with whom your interest in purebred dogs gives you a great deal in common. She's in the sport because she loves dogs, intelligently and with an appreciation of the subtle differences between a dog that is good and a dog that can be great. Now, this puppy had a potential, but it was up to her to make him a show dog and if he turned out to be good enough, a champion. There were the usual problems and illnesses along the way, the headaches and heartaches that are all part of the game. It wasn't always easy, but she was getting there. And it certainly was worth it. This was a dog she could really be proud of. She believed in him, too. And by the time he was old enough for real competition, his qualities and her careful training had justified her faith. If his early winnings meant anything, this dog was going places, fast. The 
show coming up would probably be a major, and she needed another one. She knew that she was entering him in a sporting competition in which a judge would make a decision about his merits as compared to the others. She knew the name of the judge who would make the decision. She was soliciting that decision, and she was paying for the privilege of receiving it. There'd have been no point in entering her dog if she didn't want it. Shows are exciting, whether they're the first or the 50th. But what did she have to get out of this one in order for it to be fun? That was the big question, because her feelings after the show would depend on the answer. What did she have in mind? Would the pleasure of the show depend entirely on winning? No, it wouldn't. But how could she help winning? How could a judge who knew his business help but agree with her? This dog, as young as he was, had quite a record. This was the dog she'd been breeding for. She was proud of him and she believed in him. This was a dog that was asking for it and deserved to get it. There was only one problem. Many of the other people at the show felt exactly the same way, and for exactly the same reasons. Somebody was bound to be disappointed. But would it mean that they'd let their disappointment spoil the show for them? It's here that the question of attitude comes in. This exhibitor had to win. The need for winning was so important that she let it color her attitude toward everyone else in the ring. To her, the show had ceased to be fun. The judge was no longer a friendly fellow sportsman doing a difficult job to the best of his ability. She no longer wanted his opinion unless it agreed with hers. Exhibitors were no longer ordinary friendly people who were competing in an exciting sports event. They might cause her to lose the only thing that made the show worthwhile. She saw them as threatening personal antagonists who must be beaten. And looking at the judge, she saw only a prejudiced authoritarian, prejudiced against her. Now this is a kind of attitude that leads to problems. An attitude an exhibitor can bring into a show that leads to the kind of problems we'd like most to see avoided. Problems that spoil the sport for the exhibitor and cause a good deal of unpleasantness for a great many other people. protection comes in. If problems like this can't be avoided, you're entitled to assurance that they won't be repeated. This kind of conduct demands action by the bench show committee. The people involved must be called for an immediate hearing. The matter will be aired completely before the members of the committee who have been selected by the club that is giving the show. In general, the bench show committee runs the show and it is empowered under the AKC rules to take action on any questions of conduct that disrupt it. They will listen to both sides and call any additional witnesses they feel they need. Crumpling a ribbon and insulting a judge are serious breaches of conduct that go beyond any question of sportsmanship or provocation. If the incidents took place, the committee will take action. Even if her complaint was justified, her conduct was not. 
The committee's interest is in conducting a sporting event that will provide the greatest pleasure and satisfaction to the greatest number of people. Their obligation to their club and to the sport is to protect the interests of the tremendous number of exhibitors, judges, and spectators for whom the sport is fun. Every show-giving club has a bench show committee that has the power to suspend any individual from all further participation in AKC activities for conduct at their show that is prejudicial to the best interest of the sport. In this case, they voted to exercise that power. The committee's decision took effect immediately and would continue indefinitely, subject to appeal. We have found that it is the attitudes that people take into a show that determine whether the sport will be protected against them or for them. A report from the bench show committee arriving at 221 is our first contact with the problem. And our only function is to carry out the committee's decision. For us, it's purely a matter of record. The suspension will continue indefinitely unless the exhibitor decides to file an appeal. Then it is our job to submit the appeal to the AKC Board of Directors. A good deal of preparation goes into the file that we present to the board. The directors are concerned with facts, and it is up to us to present them with a clear, complete, impartial picture. The board itself may consider the appeal, but in most cases, the members will decide that the question can best be resolved through a local hearing. Anyone appealing from a bench show committee decision is entitled to a personal hearing, and the board will usually vote to turn the case over to one of the AKC regional trial boards. Trial boards are a regular part of the AKC. Their hearings are formal proceedings in which sworn testimony is taken and recorded. Trial boards act only on matters referred to them by the board of directors. Their function is to represent the sport, but at the same time to protect the individual interests of the people who come before them. In hearing the appeal, the trial board determines whether the exhibitor had a fair hearing and if the decision of the bench show committee was justified. If so, what further action will be fair to the exhibitor and still protect the sport? The trial board can reverse the decision of the bench show committee and exonerate the exhibitor or sustain the decision, continuing the suspension or limiting it to a specific period of time. Trial board members are dog lovers, too. They can understand the feelings involved in the case as well as the facts, and they'll take those feelings into consideration in reaching their decision. But their first responsibility is to the million or more other people for whom the sport is fun. Mrs. Anders' problem was actually so simple. It was so unpleasant to resolve, but it would have been so easy to avoid. Judges' problems show another aspect of protecting the sport. Now let's see what those problems are in another story. This one isn't about a judge, but about a man who used to be a judge. It's all here, places, names, dates, events. But before we go into it, let's take a look at a bit of the background. Judging is a serious job with a lot of responsibility. The decisions made at shows are reflected in the more than four million names in the AKC stud book. Today's winners will be the sires and dams of tomorrow's champions. And through the stud book, judges' decisions will affect the lives of millions of dogs that are still unborn.
Judges' decisions also provide the information for our permanent show records. The information that goes into them is the basis for transactions in which thousands of dogs and hundreds of thousands of dollars change hands every year. So that you can trust those decisions, a judge's badge must be a symbol of confidence. For your protection, we must know that the individuals who wear it know the rules, regulations, and policies that govern dog shows. That they know the standards of the breeds they're approved to judge and that they are aware of any changes. We must be certain that they know these things and that they can put their knowledge to work by following the rules of ring procedure. Judging is a matter of individual evaluation according to standards. A judge's opinion must be carefully considered. It must be based on knowledge and experience and arrived at thoughtfully after close observation and a skilled, detailed examination of each of the dogs involved. It will be an opinion, but it will be final, and the character and competence of the person who gives it must be above reproach. Bill Dodd lost the privilege of judging because the judge's badge was not a symbol of confidence when he wore it. Here too, it was a matter of attitude that showed up in a series of incidents that occurred over a period of years. In one of them, he made a mistake in the rules. It seemed like a simple mistake, awarding winners and reserve at the same time without getting a dog that was eligible to compete for reserve back into the ring. This exhibitor knew the rules and her rights. The judge should have awarded winners and then made certain that all eligible dogs were in the ring before picking reserve. It was just carelessness. But the unpleasant confusion that followed brought up an important question. Rules and ring procedures provide the pattern for reaching a decision. How competent can he be if he lets himself forget them? His answer gave us the assurance that it wouldn't happen again. And it didn't. But something else did. An unpleasant situation that resulted from his forgetting a change in standard and failing to disqualify a Shetland Sheepdog that was over 16 inches high. Again, it was carelessness, but selective breeding is the heart of the sport. How competent can any of his decisions be if he lets himself forget a condition in a standard that calls for disqualification? After that, he didn't judge again for quite a while. Then when he did, he made some other mistakes. They seemed like simple things, and they were simple things, but they brought up some unpleasant questions about his personal integrity. There were several situations and a great many questions. We couldn't answer them, and the only action we could take for the protection of the sport was to make it unnecessary for other exhibitors to have to ask them. When his record was presented to the board of directors, they turned it over to a special committee that investigates problems involving judges. This committee, too, is a regular part of the AKC, and its hearings are formal proceedings. Something was obviously wrong. What was it? Why had these things happened to a sincere sportsman who had been a breeder and a judge for so many years? It's part of the committee's job to go into questions like this as thoroughly as possible, and they did. The only answer they could find was carelessness. It was only a matter of attitude, but we have found through the years that careless mistakes can be just as damaging as any other kind, and we must take whatever action is necessary to protect the sport against them too. A 
judge's conduct must be above reproach. Judging purebred dogs according to the standards is a matter of evaluation. And since judges' decisions are final, it is absolutely essential, as far as we're concerned, for exhibitors to have confidence not only in the decisions, but in the person who gives them. Nobody likes to lose. And the attitude that a judge takes into a show will have a lot to do with the spirit in which exhibitors accept his decisions and with the feelings that many of them will take home with them. It's our job to do whatever is necessary for the protection of the sport. But we'd be a lot happier if some of the problems that arise could be avoided. And they can be. Dog shows, wherever they are, big or little, all breed or specialty, take a great deal of planning and a lot of work to provide the physical surroundings that you are expected to take for granted. All these things have one purpose, to make the showing of purebred dogs as interesting, as pleasant, and as convenient as possible. It's part of our job to approve judges who will justify your confidence in their badges. We do our best, but we sometimes make mistakes. If you have a complaint, we want to know about it. But the decisions themselves are final. We're as careful as we can be in approving judges, and the privilege of judging will not be granted to individuals in whom we do not have confidence. The procedures for judging have been carefully worked out. They make it possible for you to show your dog to best advantage and for the judge to reach a well-qualified decision. A dog in action is his own best showman. Watching carefully as he moves around the ring gives the judge a pretty good idea of what he's like under his coat. This is where muscular and skeletal faults show up. Posed, a dog may look like a balanced, typey animal, but it is when he's in motion that any structural unsoundness is sure to reveal itself. Seeing a dog in motion, going and coming and from the side, enables the judge to appraise all of the individual characteristics as they work together. Judging is a process of evaluation in which the judge mentally measures each of the entries against the standard. The dogs in the ring are there for the judge to decide in what order, in his opinion, they come closest to the standard. Ring procedures require the judge to examine each of the dogs individually in detail. The judge will look for the small qualitative variations that may make the difference. Or he may be checking on an impression he got while the dog was in motion. At every stage in his examination, he is seeking information on which to base his decision. There is no other way for him to get it. Every dog must receive the same careful evaluation. A shortcut in judging procedures will antagonize exhibitors, many of whom have been in the sport long enough to do a pretty accurate job of judging a judge. Following ring procedures to the letter is the only way to make sure that everyone is getting the most out of the competition. Whatever you're looking for in the sport, this is where you'll find it. It's all here for you. But we need your help in protecting it against the unpleasant problems that can spoil it. We can only solve those problems, but you can avoid them. As a judge, you can avoid them by remembering that exhibitors are judging you, out of the ring as well as in it. They will have confidence in your decisions only if your actions sustain their confidence in your competence and integrity. As an exhibitor, you can avoid problems by remembering that every other exhibitor feels about his dog just exactly as you do about yours. And for exactly the same reasons.
another show is over. How was it? We know that everything possible was done to make it a good show. And we know that whatever you're looking for in the sport was there. But only you can know whether you found it. Only you can know what you really got out of the show. And only you can know what you're looking forward to getting out of the next one.